Have you ever wondered how big trucks get cleaned? Well, we're about to find out. I'm here at a giant truck wash. These trucks drive for miles and miles, delivering important things all over the country, which means they also get very dirty. This truck wash is so popular that there's a queue of muddy trucks all waiting to get cleaned. And it can clean all sorts of different trucks. Big lorries, gas tankers, even car transporters. The trucks start by driving into the truck wash very carefully and stop once they're fully inside. The cleaning team begin by spraying special soapy water over the whole truck. This soap gets to work straight away loosening all of that grease and grime. If the dirt is really bad or difficult to reach, the team will use long brushes to get to these hard to reach places. Then it's time to turn on the rollers. This huge machine is controlled from these switches here. The cleaning team select what sort of truck is in the wash so that the rollers can clean the right places on the vehicle. There's three rollers in total two that clean each side of the truck and one that cleans the front, the top and the back. The soft rollers wipe all of the muck away and the spray nozzles rinse the truck clean. The huge machine that carries the rollers moves forwards and backwards along the truck on rails, just like a train would. This truck wash is very special too. The dirty water goes down the drain and is magically turned into clean water in this pump room. That means that most of the dirty water is recycled and no water is wasted. If there's any bits that the machine has missed, it's time for the cleaning team to use some super powerful jets to blast off that stubborn dirt. Look at that! This lorry's as good as new, clean and sparkling. Good job team! See you again soon! Bye! Hello everyone, I'm here at the Hoylake lifeboat station where I'm going to go sailing on this huge lifeboat behind me. Lifeboats are very important boats because they are life-saving boats. They rescue people who are in trouble out at sea. And look, this massive tractor is used to take the boat down to the beach and launch it into the sea. Just look at those caterpillar tracks! But the lifeboat wouldn't be any use without the amazing crew that sail her and look after her. Here come the crew now to get ready for launch. These crew members are real life superheroes who give up their free time to save people who are in trouble at sea. Today they're doing a training exercise. Look at the lifeboat coming out of the station now. The tractor is pushing it out of the station and down the ramp to the beach. Those caterpillar tracks are perfect for travelling along the sandy, muddy beach. 
the crew are also launching a hovercraft today, which can travel on land and sea by floating around on a cushion of air. These huge fans on the back are what pushes the hovercraft along, and it's very, very noisy. Here comes the lifeboat and the tractor. The tractor can go deep into the water to launch the lifeboat smoothly into the sea. The trailer tilts and the boat just slides off. Here we go, we're out at sea. This Shannon class lifeboat can go really fast so that they can get to people in trouble as quickly as possible. This is Andy. He's the coxswain, which means he's in charge of the lifeboat today. And this is Matt, the deputy coxswain and driver of the boat. What are you doing now, Andy? Now we're going to do a man overboard exercise. What will happen is one of our guys will go in the water now, and then we'll pick them up. This brave member of the crew has volunteered to get in the cold water so that the rest of the crew can practice how to pull somebody out again. On the boat! They use a special harness and ropes to pull him out as quickly and safely as possible. Just look at how the crew all work together as a team to rescue him. Do you want to have a look inside the lifeboat? Come on, Andy's going to give us a quick tour. So the first seat we come to is a crew seat or a doctor's seat. So if we have to take a doctor out, the, the doctor would sit there. Then we've got Alistair sitting here. He's the navigator today. So he's keeping us safe and in deep water. As we come further back, we've got the coxswain seat. So the coxswain sits in the middle of the boat and he's able to look at everything that's going on around the boat. Alongside the coxswain we have the mechanic seat. He's looking after the engines and he has all the controls he needs for, uh, for operating anything we need during the journey out to rescue someone. We've got the radar seat. The radar is a, is a great piece of equipment. The radar will see in the dark or it'll see through fog when, uh, when we can't see anything. And then we have the helmsman seat. This is where the, the lifeboat's driven from. At the minute, there's no one sitting in here because the lifeboat's getting driven from uh, on deck. Thanks for the tour, Andy. The tractor's waiting for us on the beach, ready to tow the boat back up to the station. Well, uh, Matt, we're about to hit the beach. You better slow down. Uh, Matt. Ah! Oh, ah, we're okay. Ah, I see, that was supposed to happen. The lifeboat's very strong and it's designed to hit the beach at speed. Now the tractor can come along and tow the boat up and onto the trailer. As well as the crew on the boat, there is also a shore crew who make sure that the launch and recovery go smoothly. Wow, that's like magic. The trailer can spin the boat around in a circle so that she's facing the right way out to sea for the next rescue mission. A long day at sea, now it's time to head back but the lifeboat's all dirty and the tractor and tracks. So the crew at the station all wash, scrub and clean. They really look after their rescue machine. It's very important to look after the boat so that she works for a long, long time. The crew take great pride in looking after the lifeboat because they know she's special. The crew are members of the R&LI which is a charity where kind people donate money to buy equipment, like this beautiful boat. And it's these brave volunteers who go out and rescue people. 
I've had a fantastic time with the crew of the RNLI Hoylake on board this incredible boat. Thanks everyone for watching. Bye! Hello everyone. I'm here at Truck Fest to meet a really big machine. A monster truck. Wow! Look at the size of the wheels on that thing. One of my best friends is a monster truck and he'd really like to meet Big Red over here. Come along, Max. Come and say hello to Big Red. Who do you think is bigger? Max or Big Red? Big Red's only built for taking passengers on a ride on his back. Look how much fun that looks! But I'm here to meet a stunt monster truck. A monster truck that crushes and jumps cars! This is Swamp Thing. A huge monster truck that weighs as much as two elephants. Swamp Thing is 14 feet tall. That's almost as tall as a giraffe. Let's take a look at Swamp Thing in action. Three, two, one, go! Wow, just look at those cars getting crushed! The monster truck is so heavy that when it lands on the cars, they are squashed as flat as a pancake. Swamp Thing is a really amazing monster machine. I wonder what it's like to drive a monster truck. This is Swamp Thing's driver, Tony. He's using his tools to perform a safety check on Swamp Thing. He's checking that all the nuts and bolts are tight so that a wheel doesn't fall off in the middle of a show. Tony, what's it like to drive a monster truck? To drive a monster truck, for me, it's the best job in the world. I saw it on TV when I was about eight years old and I never thought I'd be doing it for a living. Um, the feel you get in there, it's so noisy, so bumpy, but the adrenaline keeps you going. How do you get in Swamp Thing? Most people think you climb on the tyres, but I'll show you how you get in. It's fairly simple. Just walk around the side of it. Doors don't open. What you got is a climbing frame, and literally, you just climb up on the inside. And then you're straight in the seat. Okay, how do you drive a monster truck? Literally, we've got one pedal for go, and one pedal for stop. That's the starting and stopping. Now we've got to work out how to steer it. Front wheels is just like a car, turns in a steering wheel. Unlike a normal car, we've got back steering, so this turns on a joystick, left and right on the back. So who's ready to crush some cars? Tony built this monster truck himself, using lots of different parts, from lorries and diggers. He knows it inside out. When Tony takes Swamp Thing around the country, he can't take it on the roads. So the monster machine has to travel in Tony's massive lorry. Swamp Thing has many of the things that a normal car would have, only they're much, much bigger. There's the wheels, the engine, the exhaust, the suspension, which gives Tony a softer landing, the brakes, the chassis, and the cabin. 
All of these things are designed so that Swamp Thing can jump. Like this. Well, it's time to say goodbye to Tony and Swamp Thing now. Thanks very much for joining us to learn about this amazing machine. See you again soon. Bye. There's a new vehicle in town today. Her name's Evie. She's clean and quiet and speedy. Evie's driven a long way today, so she wants to stop off at Gecko's garage for a rest. Oh dear, what's happened to Evie? She was zooming along and now she's slowed right down. She must be very tired. You'd better get over to Gecko's garage, Evie. Quickly, uh, I mean slowly. Hello, Evie. You seem very slow and sluggish. Hmm, I think you might need refueling. Drive round to our fuel pumps and we'll soon get you sorted out. Right now, let's get you filled up with fuel. Oh, where's your fuel cap? Hmm, that's very strange. I can't see it anywhere. How can we fill up your fuel tank if there's nowhere to put the fuel in? Something seems wrong here. Head into the garage and let's have a good look at you. Let's all see what we can learn as we make Evie turn. Evie looks like a normal car, but where does her fuel go? And no exhaust pipe either. What's wrong? I just don't know. There's something that I'm missing, a nagging little doubt. I'll wake up the Mechanicals to check her engine out. Go, go Mechanicals! <laughs> what, what, what's going on? It's empty. Evie, where's your engine? How can you drive around without an engine? Oh, Evie. Oh, E V. E V. Electric vehicle. Of course. Evie is an electric car. Instead of a petrol or diesel engine to power the car, Evie has electric motors that drive her wheels and batteries hidden under her seats, which store all of the electricity she needs. That's why she's so quiet. She doesn't have an exhaust pipe belching out nasty fumes or a fuel tank because she fills up with electricity instead. Evie, you need to be plugged in to charge up. We have two regular fuel pumps but no electric car charging point. We'll have to install one. I'll get Florence the forklift to bring the parts over and we can build one. Well done, Mechanicals. That's looking great. The electric charging point is connected to the solar panels on the garage roof that Chelsea the cherry picker helped us to install. Here's the charging cable. Now, where on Evie do we plug it in? Brilliant! Evie has a charging socket hidden in her nose. So now Evie can fill up with clean electricity using energy from the sun. 
The charging station tells us how full of electricity Evie is. Look at those numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. She's full up. Fantastic! Thanks for visiting us today, Evie. Have a safe journey. Call in and see us whenever you need a top-up. And we'll see you again soon too. Bye! Hello everyone! We've all been invited to a Halloween party at the construction site. The mechanicals are blowing up some spooky coloured balloons for us to take to the party. Midnight Black, Slime Green and Pumpkin Orange. The trucks are going to help me make a spooky Halloween cake for the party. Here come the ingredients. Dylan is carrying the flour. Sid has the cocoa powder and the sugar. Trevor has the butter and the eggs, fresh from the farm. Celia's here to mix all of the ingredients together in her rotating drum. This is going to be an enormous cake! Now the ingredients have been poured into the giant cake tin, we need to cook the cake. Let's set the truck wash to party mode. Can you remember which button is the party button? That's right, it's the red balloon. Party mode turns the truck wash into a giant cake baking and decorating machine. Let's bake that cake. First, the cake is cooked. Look at it rise. Now, our Halloween cake needs some orange icing. And a face cut into it. And finally, the cake needs a giant candle inside to make the face light up. Look! Fantastic! It's a perfect pumpkin Halloween cake! Now it's time to get my truck friends into their spooky costumes for the party. Let's put the truck wash into Halloween mode! Can you remember which button is the Halloween button? That's right! It's the orange pumpkin! First in, our new truck, Tilly. Her costume's a real zinger. She makes a brilliant scorpion. Just watch out for her stinger! Next up is our friend Trevor. Let's take it to the next level. Just add a tail and some horns. What a cheeky devil! And next into the big machine, those mechanicals couldn't wait. To put on their funny pumpkin heads. I think they all look great. Here comes Danny and Maisie to get changed into their spooky costumes. Danny the Digger goes in looking fine. But out comes a scary monster, made by Dr. Frankenstein. The last one in is Maisie. Will her costume make us shaky? Oh dear, she may have a forked tongue, but she doesn't look very snaky. Maisie wants to be a scary snake, but she's far too short and stout. Can you think of any way that we could stretch her out? 
That's right. We could press the stretch button. Can you remember which button is the stretch button? Yes, it's the blue arrows. Daisy's back in the machine. It makes her longer, just like this. Out comes a long and scary snake. Just listen to her hiss. Now we've got our costumes on, it's nearly party time. But maybe we should take something for our other truck friends to wear. We've got these traffic cone party hats from my birthday. But they don't look very scary. Hmm. I've got an idea. We'll need to press the respray button. Can you remember which button is the respray button? That's right. It's the purple spray can. Along the belt go the orange cones to get a quick respray. And now they're black like witches' hats. I think we're ready. Hooray! We're all driving over to the construction site now. See you at the party. Tilly the Scorpion. Trevor the Devil. Maisie the snake, Danny the monster, what a great party! Happy Halloween everyone, I'll see you again soon! <laughs>
there. Now the mud's gone, let's get you into the garage so that we can take a good look at you. Let's all see what we can learn as we make Leo turn. Wow, that is a nasty scratch. And your sunglasses are broken too. Don't worry Leo, the mechanicals will soon have you looking as good as new. Go, go mechanicals! That really is an awful scratch. But the mechanicals have paint to match. A quick respray. New glasses too. And there you are, as good as new. Fantastic! Leo looks like a super cool dude again. Well done mechanicals! It's time to drive over to the movie premiere. Jump in mechanicals! Red, orange and yellow mechanicals. Green, blue and purple mechanicals. Black, white and grey mechanicals. Brown mechanical and pink mechanical. Hang on a minute. It looks like the Mechanicals have invited all of their friends and family to join us. Goodness me, they're all coming out of the woodwork. Leo might be a stretch limo, but he can't possibly carry all these extra Mechanicals to the premiere. He's going to need some help. Here come some helpers now. Maisie the mower, Trevor the tractor, Max the monster truck, Dylan the dump truck, and Bobby the bus. Hmm, I'm still not sure there's going to be room for all these extra mechanicals. Let's measure you. Let's measure the vehicles to see how long they are. We can use the crates to help us. Maisie the mower is the smallest. She's one crate long. Next is Trevor the tractor. Two crates long. The middle truck is Max the monster truck. Three crates long. Even bigger is Dylan the dump truck. Four crates long. The longest vehicle is Bobby the bus. Five crates long. To make more room for more mechanicals, I think we're going to have to turn you all into stretch trucks. Let's press the stretch button. The first one in is little Maisie. Ha ha, this machine is really crazy. It pushes and pulls her, fast then slower. Welcome Maisie, the stretch mower. Here comes Trevor from the farm. Don't worry Trev, no need for alarm. Now he really has the X Factor. Introducing Trevor, the stretch tractor. Next in line is our friend Max. Following in Trevor's tracks. Everyone will be awestruck by Max, the stretch monster truck. Dylan is the next one through. Ready to join the stretched out crew. A 
twist, a pull, a nip, a tuck. It's Dylan, the stretch dumper truck. Bobby is the last through the machine. It stretches him like a string bean. It's Bobby XL plus plus plus. It's super long Bobby, the stretch bus. Let's see how long our vehicle friends are now. Maisie the mower is six crates long. Trevor the tractor, seven crates long. Max the monster truck, eight crates long. Dylan the dump truck, is nine crates long. And last but definitely not least, Bobby the bus is 10 crates long. They're enormous. That's everyone on board. Let's head over to the movie premiere. Wow, this is amazing! Thank you to Leo and my other truck friends for driving us to the movie in style. I'm sorry they can't join us all in the cinema. They're too long to fit in the seats. Hang on a minute. This isn't a regular movie theatre. It's a drive-in. That means everyone can watch the film, even my truck friends. Hooray! I'll see you again soon. Bye! Hello everyone! We've got a new vehicle to meet today. Maisie the mower is cutting the long grass along the sides of the road with her giant cutters. She cuts the grass nice and short so that vehicles can see where they're going and stay safe. Maisie leaves the rest of the grass and wild flowers to grow tall so that bees and butterflies have plenty of nectar to eat. That's looking great, Maisie. Now that Maisie has cut the grass verges, she's here at the stadium with an important job to do. It's the Truck Cup final soon, so the vehicles are going to be playing football on this pitch. That's soccer for all you lovely American viewers. The vehicles are over at the garage getting painted up, ready to play in the Truck Cup final. But here at the stadium, the football pitch is very overgrown. It needs mowing right away so that the grass is short enough to play on. The pitch is enormous! There's lots of grass to cut. Maisie's mowing the pitch in lovely straight lines. Oh dear, I think I spoke too soon. Maisie's wobbling about and the lines are all wavy. I think something's wrong with Maisie's steering. Oh no, 
Now she's cutting shapes into the grass. Triangle. Circle. Square. Rectangle. Pentagon. Hexagon. And star. That's no good at all. We need to get Maisie to the garage. But she can't drive in a straight line for long enough to get there. This looks like a job for Helen the helicopter. Go, go, Helen! Okay, Maisie, let's get you back to Gecko's garage. Garage roof open at speed. It's time to help a vehicle in need. Let's see what we can learn as we make Maisie turn. Hmm, your blades and your wheels seem okay. It looks like it's just your steering column that's broken. I'll get the mechanicals to fix you right away. Go, go, mechanicals! It's hard to get on with the mowing when you can't choose where you are going. You need to mow in nice straight lines in order to be finished on time. The mechanicals have fixed your steering the football crowds will soon be cheering. Get back to the stadium and fast. Then you can cut, cut, cut that grass. Now that Maisie's been repaired, she's making short work of that grass. It's looking great. And following her is Sid the skid loader with his line painting attachment. He's repainting the pitch markings onto the lovely short grass. Well done, Maisie. Well done, Sid. Now Maisie and Sid have finished working on the pitch, everything is nearly ready for the Truck Cup final. Join us next time to watch the match and see which team will win the trophy. Bye!